So in this video, I'm going to walk through a more end-to-end -end use case of using Langsmith automations to optimize your application over time by constructing a few shot example data sets. Um, and so the example application that I'm going to uh, build is an application that writes tweets for me. Um, and so, you know, I like my tweets written in, in a particular style. Um, and so I'm going to build an application uh, that can do that. And I'm going to show how to optimize that uh, via a combination of user feedback and human annotation queue um, over time um, to build an application that writes more in the style that I like. So let's get set up. Um, we can import, we'll use OpenAI for this. We can import Langsmith. And I'll create this really simple uh, function. Um, it's called Tweeter. It takes in a topic um, and it basically just calls OpenAI with this really kind of like just standard prompt, write a tweet about topic um, and then returns it. Um, what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to pass in the run ID and we'll see why I'm doing this. But basically this is, this is so that I can specify the run ID ahead of time, which then lets me know how to add feedback for a run. So big part of this, um, I'm not going to actually create a front end for this. I'm just going to mock it out, but basically the big part of this is collecting feedback from end users in some different environment, um, passing that into Langsmith and then using that to, to kind of like optimize your application over time. So here um, I pass in the run ID, I pass in NBA and I get back this tweet, just watched an insane NBA game. Those players are on another level, hashtag NBA, hashtag basketball is life. And then some emojis. Um, I kind of like this one. Let's, let's pretend for simplicity, I'm going to like tweets where it ends with an emoji. And that's like, you know, that's a, a latent uh, thing that's impacting whether I like the tweet or not. And so let me leave kind of like positive feedback on that. Um, let me try again. Uh, let's do like soccer. Okay, so this doesn't end with an emoji. So even if this is a good tweet, I'm actually going to leave uh, negative feedback on this. Okay, so that's the basic idea of what's going on. Now let's set up some rules in Langsmith that'll help uh, uh, optimize this over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my project and I created a special project. If you notice here, I set the Langchain project to be optimization. Um, and so uh, I'll go into optimization and I'm going to set up a rule that takes everything with positive feedback and adds it to a data set. So let me go into this filter. I'm going to add this filter uh, feedback user score is one. I'm going to add a rule. Um, tweeting optimization sample rate of one. I'm going to send this to a data set, data set name, tweeting. Let me create a new data set. Um, tweeting optimization. Um, and let's create that. Let's save. Boom. Okay. Awesome. So now I'm going to interact with my application a little bit more. So now let's write um, one about the NFL. And it doesn't end in an emoji. So I'm going to leave uh, negative feedback or no feedback at, at this point. I'll, I'll show it how to incorporate negative feedback later on. But for now, um, let's, let's not leave any feedback. Um, let's do NBA again. Still no emoji. Let's keep on iterating until I get one that ends in a. All right, let's get try to get one that ends in an emoji. All right, so this is proving a little bit more difficult than we want. Um, There we go. So this ends with some emojis. So I'm going to leave now positive feedback on this. Let's keep on iterating until we get another one that ends with an emoji. All right, this one ends with an emoji. Let's leave positive feedback on this. So now what's going to happen is these uh, things that I left positive feedback for, they'll start to get added to a data set over time. 
And so these uh, automations run every minute. And so I'm going to need to give it a little bit, but I should be able to go to a data set and start to see these things uh, pop up as examples in the data set. So here we are in data sets and testing. I can search for tweet optimization, and I can see that I have my two examples here. So if I click in, I can see the input and the output, and I can do the same for uh, over here. And I can see that they're the ones that end in emoji. So now what I want to do is I want to make my prompt a few shot example prompt. And I want to start pulling these examples in and using them as examples for my application. OK, so back in this notebook, um, I am going to pull down examples from this data set. And so I'm going to use the Langsmith client. I'm going to list examples, set the data set name equals to tweeting optimization. And again, this is what I named the data set. Um, and I can run this and I can get my examples, which right now are two. Um, and I can see that I have a bunch of uh, information about this example. Um, and the most important part is the inputs and the outputs. So I have here the inputs, topic soccer, and outputs. And then I have an output key and it's this tweet. Um, so what I want to do is I want to use these as few shot examples in a prompt. Um, and so as part of that, this is what it could look like. So let's say, um, you know, we could take uh, these uh, examples and put them into some string like this. Uh, and so we'll have kind of like this input output pairing. And then let's recreate our, our tweeting optimizer. Um, and here in, inside, we'll actually pull down the examples. So we'll refresh this each time. Um, this is maybe a little bit overkill because this will be another network call. Um, so you could do this outside. But for this example, I'm going to do it inside this function. I'm going to create this string. And then I'm going to edit my prompt. So it's still going to say write a tweet about topic. But then I'm adding these new things. Here are some examples of how to do this well. Um, and then I pass in this example string up here. And so hopefully what we'll start to see as we give it few shot examples, it starts to implicitly kind of like learn what kinds of tweets I like and don't like. And so if we run it here and ask it to write a tweet about the Oscars, OK, awesome. So it added some emojis to the end. Um, and so I can give positive feedback on that. And it starts to pick that up. Um, one thing that I want to show now is how to do this same thing, but start incorporating kind of like negative feedback. Um, and so there's, there's actually a few like interesting ways that you could do this. You could create the same automation and basically send all rows with negative feedback to another data set and then include those in the prompt and be like, these are examples of tweets that the user did not like. Um, so that's one thing you could do. But for a little bit more of variety, um, I'm going to actually send negative tweets to an annotation queue and then manually kind of like edit this. And this, so this shows kind of like the human in the loop component. Um, so so maybe, so let's see. So here, let me, let me run this a few times until I get a tweet that I don't actually like. Let me change the topic to something like uh, AI. OK, so here it doesn't end in an emoji. So great, I'm going to leave negative feedback on that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my tweeting optimization project. I'm going to set up a filter for where my feedback user score is 0. And then I'm going to add a rule, um, negative feedback. And I'm going to send this to an annotation queue. I'm going to create a new queue, which is tweeting optimization. Let me create that. Um, let me save that. And awesome. OK. So now when I go to my annotation queue, I should start to see these runs with negative feedback show up. So here we are in the annotation queues, and I can click into the tweeting optimization annotation queue I just created. And here is the, the uh, negative run that I got. And actually, there, there's four of them because I gave some downloads before, and those showed up. So here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit them um, and then add them to a data set. So what I can do is I can just like edit this, delete that. Now it ends in emoji. Awesome. Now I can add it to a data set. Perfect. Done with that one. Go on to the next one. Going to edit this one, correct this to what I want it to be, add to a data set. Let's add it to 
There we go. Keep on going. All right, this one doesn't have any, so I'm going to remove uh, the hash. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to skip this one. So I'm just going to be done with this without even adding it to a data set. Um, and here, boom, add this to a data set. We're done. We're all caught up. Awesome. So now if I go back to the notebook, um, I can start to pull down the examples again. And I can see now I have a lot more examples. And if I run uh, this uh, updated tweeter anymore, let's choose a new topic, uh, like humans. It ends in emoji. If I go back to Langsmith, I can go to my project. I can go to my optimization project. I can click into here. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the run that I had. So this is how we built an application that sets up Langsmith automations that takes user feedback takes ones with good user feedback, automatically adds it to a data set, takes one with bad user feedback, automatically adds it to an annotation queue. A human can then go in and correct it, and it starts to build up this data set. And this data set, I'm then plugging back into the application, and it's using that in future iterations to start tweeting, uh, in, in this case tweeting, but in your case it could be whatever application you're building. It's optimizing that performance and making it better over time. And so, this is one use case that we're really, really excited about, and we built a lot of the functionality to specifically to enable this.